Good afternoon. Welcome to Saints Peter and Paul. Please join us in our opening song, Love Goes On. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
The Mass today is being offered for the 54th wedding anniversary of Cora and Benny Garces, Ramona Palomar, Jean and Evelyn Cruz, Norman and Ginger Membrere, and all mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, past and present. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. those who fear him, on those who hold 
steadfast love to deliver the soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Let your love be upon us, Lord, even as we hope in A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, a living stone. Though rejected by human beings, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Good afternoon. If you do not know me, my name is Deacon Neal. I am a member of St. Peter and Paul Parish, and I'm supposed to be a priest, so I've been in the seminary studying, and I'm supposed to be ordained a priest this year. Actually, I was supposed to be a priest yesterday. But of course, as you can see, I'm still a deacon. So I too have, in many ways, been affected by this um, COVID influenza thing. But before I get started, I would like to thank Father Mario for having me here, for giving me the chance, one, not just to train me, but to really invite me into what it means to be a priest. And of course, some of you may know, we celebrate in the Diocese of Toronto priest anniversaries around the same time because we normally get ordained the second week of May. So yesterday, which would have been my ordination day, was also Father Mario's anniversary. So please join me and congratulate him for a second. 22 years strong. That's how long he's been a priest. Me, minus five months or so like that. However long this takes to go. I'm still a baby. But thank you, Father, for for having me here. If it wasn't enough that I had missed my ordination, In a way, Jesus kind of set me a big reminder because every single reading today has to do with priesthood. The first reading, the second reading, and the gospel. And there's a bit of a surprise, so hang on for that. When I was on my internship, which means I was just shadowing a priest for a year, I did that at St. Lawrence. Hello, St. Lawrence and Martyr people. One day, I, I normally have my own confessor, but before Mass, the priest would go into the back and they would sit for confession, and I decided, you know, I think I need confession today. So the first time, I stood in line with the people. And as I stood in line, this lady, very friendly lady, very nice lady, looked at me and she was shocked because she was thinking, why are you here? Actually, she wasn't thinking it. She said it. She said, what are you doing here, Neil? You're a seminarian. You're perfect. You're not allowed to have sins. And that's the image we have, right? That people like myself, seminarians, like Father Mario, your priest, any priest that you know, the Pope, God calls them because they are without sin. And that could not be further from the truth. And we'll see that today in these readings. In fact, St. John Paul II, as great as he was, went to confession once a week. Think about that for a second. He went to confession once a week because he knew who he was and also to encounter Christ in that sacrament. So again, our image of what the priesthood is, of what holiness is, is not just this perfection, this pure white angel-like beings. I assure you, Father Mario is not an angel, nor am I an angel. 
In fact, if you want, my mother is probably ready with a list of things I've done wrong since coming home. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. All of that's coming. What is interesting is that yesterday, what was supposed to happen at my ordination, was the Cardinal, Cardinal Collins, would have taken holy oil, what we call chrism. And it's kind of nice, because during Holy Week, in the Diocese of Toronto, we choose Tuesday, we have what is called the chrism mass. And so as many priests as possible, possibly all, come to the cathedral. And they come to the cathedral just to pray over holy oils. And there's three different types of holy oils. But one of them is the oil of chrism. And this is a little bit important. And actually, it's the oil that we would use at ordinations and in other places. And during the ceremony, when, I don't know if the, we still do this or how necessary it is, but the cardinal will stand over the oil, especially the oil of chrism, and he'll breathe over it. Maybe not today and these days because of COVID. He's probably not breathing over it, don't worry. But that is supposed to be a gesture of the Holy Spirit coming down on us, like it came down, like coming down on the oil, like it came down on the apostles the breathing of life. And then he'll extend his hands and he'll pray over it. And all the priests will join him and they'll extend their hands. They'll get a little bit charismatic. It's the only time we'll see all the priests in the diocese being charismatic. They'll all raise their hands and they'll pray for that holy oil, for its use, for the anointing. And so what he would have done yesterday was he would have taken my hands and have taken the oil and he would have lathered it all over my hands as an anointing because these hands are now going to touch sacred vessels. It's a symbol of now the fact that you're going to handle holy things. It's a symbol of priesthood. When a church is first dedicated and when you get a new altar, they also do this to the altar. So if you've been to the cathedral, when they opened it up, the cardinal would have taken that jar of oil and he would have poured it all over the altar as a sign that it is consecrated to God. And I believe they also do that with some of the vessels. But, here's the surprising part, it doesn't stop there. That same oil, and you may take this as good news or bad news, that very same oil, which makes me a priest, which makes a bishop a bishop, is the same oil that is used at baptism. So after the priest baptizes a baby, he's done the washing, he'll take that same oil, the oil of chrismation, and he will anoint the head of the baby or the adult. There's one more time we use this. You can probably guess it's during confirmation. The, the bishop or, the, or your priest will take the same oil and he'll anoint the head and he'll say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Probably didn't think of it, but that's the same oil. And it's the same oil because it makes an imprint on our soul. Literally, it's like a kiss of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes down and joins to your soul. And each time you receive that oil, it makes an imprint. So it makes an imprint at baptism, it makes an imprint at confirmation, and for every ordination, diaconate, priesthood, and bishop. Now I mention this because in the readings today, you will hear something unusual. You will hear in the second reading, St. Peter calling the whole people, all of Israel, he says, you are a nation of priests, a holy nation. He calls the whole nation holy. He calls them a royal priesthood. Think about that for a second. He's not just talking about priests like me and Father. He is talking about everyone, including yourselves, our priests. And the church teaches, in her teaching, that there are actually two types of priesthood. One of them is the one that we all know, and it's the priesthood the ministerial priesthood, so the priesthood of what we do here, giving out the sacraments. 
And that is very, very important because it gives life to the church. And Father is actually Christ. That is called, again, the ministerial priesthood. But there is a second priesthood. And that is the priesthood which all of you here, if you're baptized, enjoy. And it's called the priesthood of the people or the common priesthood. Every single one of us is chrismated, is consecrated for God. Like those vessels, like my hands, like the bishop's head. You are consecrated for God. So it's not the holiness is not just up to me and Father. Holiness is our job. So when people ask me, are you scared, scared at all that you're going to be alone? It's tough. Look at the world. Look at this reading and I'm not going to be whole, alone. I've got all of you. Because Christ expects that from us. The catechism even teaches us that there is ultimately only one priest. And that one priest, of course, is Christ. We simply participate in that. But through baptism, through confirmation, we are all consecrated to the holy priesthood. It's interesting. You'll see sometimes during big masses, an altar server come up and we'll use incense. And usually incense is, to, is incense towards holy things. So we'll incense the book of the Gospels. We'll incense the Eucharist, the vessels. The server was also incense the priest. Why? Because the priest is holy, yes, and the priest is Christ. So he'll incense him. And then the server comes down right to the center, and he'll bow to the people, to all of you. And he'll incense the people. That's not just for fun. He incenses the people because you are Christ, because you are holy, and because you are responsible. That is the dignity that you have. So remember that. As you go out living your days in this time of COVID, not being able to come to Mass, you are holy, you are consecrated, you are just as responsible as Father and myself. It's kind of hard, right, to accept this reality that we are all priests. Again, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to change church teaching. This is the church's teaching. It's in the catechism. If you don't believe me, 1546 in the catechism. It says it there. Let me help you out a little bit with the image of a priest. Again, we're so stuck, and rightly so maybe, that an image of a priest is, does the sacraments. But in its essence, and Father loves this word, a priest is called pontifex. Now you might have heard the Pope being called the pontifex maximus, which means he's the, on earth, the highest of these pontifexes. Pontifex means bridge builder. What kind of a bridge are you building? The bridge between the human and the divine, that connection. And who did that perfectly? Christ, because he was both human and divine. So Christ is that bridge. The Pope on earth is the highest of those builders. You are a bridge builder. Always remember that. We are stuck here in this church to some extent, preaching to you so that you can go out there and like Father says, you can preach. You can live in the, Holy, in the Spirit. And the Catechism even tells us this. To be a priest for the common people means three things. It means to live in faith, to live in hope, and to live in charity. If we pray the rosary, we pray for those three things every day. Faith, hope, charity. You exercise those things you're living your priesthood. It also says one more thing. If you live a life according to the Spirit, to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which Father has been emphasizing so much, the fruits of the Spirit, you pay attention to it, that is exercising your priestly function. Right now, coming to Mass or sitting in your homes and participating in this liturgy is a priestly function. Remember that. Bridge builder. So a good examination of conscience for us sometimes at the end of the day is to ask ourselves, am I a bridge or an obstacle? Because you're either one of those. Are you a bridge to Christ? Or when people look at you, are you an obstacle? Because they might look and say, that's a Christian? And it's not to make you feel bad. 
It's just to make you feel responsible and to know the great dignity that he has called you to. A simple image, maybe, of what a priest is, and we all know this, and you can do this too, is that a priest does two things really well, or the essence of his priesthood, including you, and that is to pray for his people, and you can all do that, you can intercede for each other, and offer sacrifice. Now that word sacrifice, I know, when you hear that, everybody's tuning me out, because the devil's saying to you right now, don't listen to this deacon. He's saying to you, you can't do that. Who wants to offer sacrifice? Who wants to be bored? Who wants to give up their life? And yet Christ says to us, that is what he expects of us, because he knows we can do it. But again, our reaction is, I just don't have it. It's not for me. You know, I have my desires in the world. I want to be famous. I want to be rich. I want to do well in school, all those things. Maybe it's your sinfulness that might think, make you think, I'm not cut out for this role. And maybe some might even think, I am useless. I cannot offer Christ anything. But you know, there's a, she's not a saint yet. But she's a very holy woman. Her name is Catherine Doherty. And she said, there is a usefulness in being useless even. That's how powerful Christ is. If he could raise Lazarus from the dead, nothing, lifeless body, he can use you. So be open. Do not give in to that spirit of discouragement, that spirit that says, you have nothing to offer this church. We've been talking a lot about the image of the Good Shepherd, and Father so well explained last week who this Good Shepherd is and what he is. He's a father, he's strong, he's encouraging, he's not afraid. He's also not someone that is just standing around, looking from heaven, judging us, saying, ah, you made a mistake, or look how much you're failing. God is not, he will come back and be a judge, yes, but he's not judging us. Something that Father didn't mention, but I wish to build on, was that he is a shepherd, but he's not, he is like many shepherds in many ways, but he's also different. And he's different in this one way, is that he is the only shepherd who is willing to become a lamb. He is the only shepherd who is willing to become his people. So that when the wolf comes, the wolf will take him instead of you and me. That is the amount that this God loves us. That is what we respond to. And he does that, he is so smart. He does that because he knows what it feels like to be rejected. He knows what it feels like to be a failure. He knows what it feels like to have weakness in a sense, not because of his sinfulness, but he feels weakness. Look at that cross. So many of my friends look at me and say, that is weakness, why would you follow that? but he doesn't just stay weak. He goes through it for our sake so that you and me, just normal people, even if you're not ordained, can be strong. They say Christ, when he was on earth, did not rely on his own power. Now I know he's God and he could have, but the scriptures also tell us he laid aside his glory. And a lot of theologians will say this, he didn't rely on his own power because he wanted to be on the same level of, as us. So we are able to do whatever he did. And the gospel even tells us we will do greater works than him. Because all of his power came from the spirit, not from his knowledge as a divine being. He felt the same thing, the same doubts that we felt. But he relied on the spirit. And again, he did that as an example for us to show us what we can achieve as well. So if you're feeling inadequate at this calling, and I don't mean to overwhelm you, that's okay. We often compare ourselves to other people and how much Neil's doing or how much Vanessa or Cantor is doing and everybody else in the church, Teresa. We don't compare ourselves to other people because it's always going to get us down. We compare ourselves to Christ, who was weak, or looked weak at least to some people and rose up. 
That is your model. We also have, rather fittingly, another model. And that is a gift that we celebrate today, and that is the gift of motherhood. Now, I forgot to mention one big thing in the start. My mother will kill me for not mentioning this, so I'm going to do it now. When I got ordained, again, I apologize beforehand to every son in the living room right now because your mother is going to drive you crazy. She's going to want you to be a priest. So I'm telling you now, I'm sorry. When I'm ordained and the cardinal uses the holy oil on my hands, he will then wipe it with a cloth, a cloth that's similarly used to wipe the vessels that we use at Mass. It's so that that holy oil, that coming down of the Spirit, is preserved on that oil. And that same cloth is then saved, and this is why the Archdiocese of Toronto very smartly does ordinations every May, the second week of May, so that it coincides with Mother's Day. So that after your ordination, you can give your gift to your mother. And that gift is that cloth which wiped off the holy oil off your hands. And that same cloth is preserved. And when eventually, we know mothers are kind of immortal, but when eventually they pass away, that same cloth will be wrapped around their hands. And it will go with them into the coffin. And it's a symbol that when they get to those pearly gates, if they need a little bit extra, they can show their hands and say, I gave my son as a priest. I apologize to every son out there if your mother wants you to be a priest. Don't force them. This has to be a free choice. But motherhood, if you want a good example of what it means to be priestly, it is motherhood. You know, motherhood isn't just some cute thing, as I'm sure every mother is probably telling you right now. They gave birth to us. Motherhood often looks like that, like Jesus on the cross. Because it involves suffering and sacrifice. And I remember my own mother, many, many days, having to stay up late nights, and not even as a baby. <laughs> this is sometimes I'm an older kid who just needed help. They're willing to give their time, their money, their sleepless nights, their vacations. For many years, when you first have a kid, you can't go on a vacation. And they can keep doing it over and over and over for years and years and years. Why? Because they are priestly, one, but because they love. And I know most of us are probably thinking, I don't have that kind of resilience. Okay? I don't have the resilience of a mother. I don't have the resilience of Christ. Yes, you do. Because you have love. Because Christ has put love in you at your baptism. That kind of resilience is for all of us. So they do two things really well that a priest does. They pray, as you probably know. They're probably praying right now for you to be a priest. <laughs> They're interceding. They're always interceding. They want their kids to go to church. That's what it means to be a priest, to pray. And again, I say sacrifice, but really I mean to love. That's what we are all called to today. So again, happy Mother's Day to all mothers, especially my own mother who's sitting at home right now. And also to all the other adopted mothers who have claimed me as their son over the last few years. I don't want to leave you guys out either. But when God chose them to be your mother and to be my mother, he didn't choose them because they were perfect. I apologize just for, in, for insinuating that they're not perfect. But they will tell you that most likely themselves. They are not perfect. And yet God trusts them with his children because he knows. He's put his love into them. And they will keep working, keep working, and keep working at it. One thing I was always grateful for to see was that even though you know, my, both my parents actually didn't always have the answers, you know, they didn't have to act like they knew everything. And what was important, at least for me to, to feel, is that even though they didn't know everything, they relied on somebody else that did. God. And that's okay. So for your children to even sense weakness in you is fine. 
as long as they know, they can feel you relying on God and they will learn to rely on God because of that. So again, God does not choose us for how good we are. I guarantee you he's not choosing me for how good I am, for how good Father Mario is. He chooses because he loves us. Simple. As simple as that. And everything we do is a response to that love. That's it. Think about who he's chosen. He's chosen Mary Magdalene. She had demons in her. He chose Peter, who denied him even after seeing him. James and John, who after being taught, still wanted to climb the ladder and say, put me on your left and your right. David. God even at one point says, David, the perfect person who has never sinned, and yet this is the same David who committed adultery, who committed murder, who just kept going down and deeper and deeper into his sin. He even chose Judas. Think about that for a second. And Judas failed, but he still chose him. But it was, it was Judas' stubbornness of heart, refusing, in a sense, to be priestly. And he chooses Father Mario, he chooses me, and he chooses you, all of you. It doesn't matter if you're weak. All of us are weak. He became a lamb for that exact reason. He loves not because you can do something great, simply because that's it. There's no other love like that. If I have one tip for you to help you as you progress through these next days, it is this. Every day when I get up now, because I'm a deacon and Father has to do this too, we wear the Roman collar when we go out. And it's a reminder to me that when I interact with people, when I do anything, that I am Christ. And it makes me a better person. Sometimes I have to fake it because I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to react in a way and I have to stop myself because I think I've got my collar. That is the spirit, in a sense, tugging on my heart, saying, no, 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 you don't just do what you want anymore. You live in the spirit. Now, I'm not saying go out and get a collar, but you can do something very, very simple. You can have something you wear every single day. Be a bracelet. I don't do well with bracelets. It can be a cross or a scapula. Put that down every day. And let it be a reminder. It's not a fashion statement, okay? Sometimes we wear it as a fashion statement, and that's a little bit even sinful to use that as a fashion statement. Let it be a reminder to you of who you are. So when you struggle, and it's okay to struggle, you will feel a little bit of that tug too. That is why we wear the cross. One, for yourself, and two, to witness to other people. One simple thing. Do something identifiable that not fathers, for yourself. Jesus, people have all these sorts of images of Jesus. But any time he interacted with people, to quickly summarize what he did, you know, he did miracles, he did all these different things, but essentially what he did was he gave people themselves. And that not be, might not be clear. He gives you who you are meant to be. Doesn't want anything else for you. He wants you to be perfectly his, perfectly loved. Whatever you're made to be, that's what he's doing for you. That's the healing that he offers, nothing else. So if you can't imagine yourself serving him because of whatever reason, know this, Jesus can imagine it. And it is only that relationship, that relationship with him, with the Spirit, and with the Father. There's only that relationship with the Trinity that transforms us. Jesus meets you wherever you are, even if you, are, if you think yourself as a failure or a sinner or you've done things that the church speaks against. Jesus meets you wherever you are. And the great example of all of this if you've been watching with us, is to watch Chosen. So later tonight, we will have episode three of Chosen. And we see 
so well, these people, who are not perfect. And yet Jesus wants to interact with them. So if you come back tonight at 6 p.m., bring a friend. Today's episode was very, very simple. They've made it for kids. So you'll see Jesus interacting with these little kids running around. Specifically, because they wanted kids to have a sense of what it means to talk to Jesus. You know, it's not just an adult thing. It's not a big person thing. It's not a Father Mario or a Neil thing. Jesus is for everybody. So invite your kids. Mothers, use your power today. If you're going to force your children to do anything, let them watch. And invite other mothers who may not know Jesus. Because it's such a light episode. But there is much in there to see how Jesus smiles. How he taught the kids. How he interacted with them. We don't think of him as having a personality. And yet he does. So join us today at 6 p.m. for Chosen. Thank you for this opportunity. Please pray for me as I'm not entirely sure when my ordination will happen. But I'm very, very grateful to God our Father, to Father Mario, and for all of your support and for all of your prayers. God bless. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our humble petitions. We pray for the church that we may find ways to both preach the word and serve our neighbor, especially during this time of separation and crisis. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the rulers of nations, that they may recognize the service provided by the church and to respect her rights and freedom. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that more and more we will come to see the Lord Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are stumbling on their search for faith, that they may come to God through Jesus Christ, the only way to the Father. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and expectant mothers, that they may know the value of their nurturing presence in the love of their families. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are on the front lines of this COVID pandemic, especially our healthcare workers and first responders, for all who are unable to stay at home but must work in harm's way to provide for their families. May God continue to protect them and keep them in good health. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those of us gathered in our homes, watching this Mass, that we may find comfort in the Lord when our hearts are troubled and extend that comfort to others whose hearts are also troubled. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who died this week, including Serendario Porgorilas, Maria Adorazio Petrola, Rovina Consuegra Manzanal, Fulgencio Bautista, Conchetta de Martis, Reverend Basil O'Brien, Reverend Peter Larisse, Reverend Michael John Hawkins, Reverend George O'Neill, and Reverend Norman Dodge. May they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. One of the names that you heard in the prayer for our dearly departed was Rowena Consuegra Manzanal. She died on Wednesday of lung cancer. She has three children, ages 11, 9, and 5, and today would have been her 40th birthday. To the children, I would say to you on this Mother's Day, I always teach children, we have two sets of eyes, the eyes of our heads that see physical things, and the eyes of our souls that see spiritual things. As unfair as it seems, you are now being forced to see with the eyes of your soul. My father died when I was nine. We are being forced at a very young age to see with the eyes of our souls. Where others see death, we see resurrection. Like when we look at a crucifix, when others see an end, we see a beginning. Where others see defeat, we see glory. Where others see pain, we see differently than others. You are being forced to see with the eyes of your soul. Others have an option. We don't, because she is there. Your mother can take this loss and create a gain through it, just like God did with the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, and he created something incredible. He sent us God the Holy Spirit, the church was born, and we see differently. You and I, who have this unique experience of losing a parent young, are being forced to see with the eyes of our souls. Your mother will take that loss and create a gain through it, so that for the rest of your lives, because she is there, you will be forced to see with the eyes of your soul. This will make you a very special person because you will see love. You will see God's hand working in your lives in such a way that others cannot. Your mother can take this loss and make it a gain. This pain you are feeling right now, your mother can make you stronger through it just like God did with all of us by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, because we now see with both sets of eyes. That is our very special prayer for you on this Mother's Day, that for the rest of your lives, you will see with both sets of eyes, every moment, every situation, even the most painful, the most difficult you will see with both sets of eyes, the eyes of the head and the eyes of the soul. That is my prayer for you. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time between Easter and Pentecost, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, Francesco and Marietta Torlone, Consiglia Pelicciotta, Potito Tadeo, Tesso Eva, Maggi Maria, Per tutte le anime in Purgatorio, Fulgencio Bautista, Maria Magdalena Pinhal Montinho, Serendario Por Gorillas, Mary Chan Sam Yao, Jojo Anton, Ronald Montalbo, and Ruina Consuegra Manzanao. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Oh, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away our sins. Jesus The world tests us to only see with the eyes of our heads. Jesus Christ counters that with his own test, this test, now forcing us to see with the eyes of our soul. This is a gift. This test is a gift. We pray that Rowena's three children will come to see the test they now are going through one day as a gift. And this is why we kneel at Catholic Mass. Because by the power of the Holy Spirit, the eyes of our souls now enable us to see this is God. This is Jesus Christ to whom we kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. I'm worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. The body of Christ. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. 
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us ask for Our Lady's protection, especially for the sick and all who care for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. At this time, we'd like to invite all mothers, godmothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, to get the picture. We'd like to invite you to please stand up so that we can give you a Mother's Day blessing. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you give life and care for your church. Bless these women, both living and deceased, as we celebrate this day in their honor. May they be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them with a spirit of profound respect. May the example of Mary, mother of Jesus, inspire them to live their vocation as Christian mothers and call their children to faith. Guide and protect them in challenging times and help them to continue to trust in you all the days of their life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On behalf of myself, Deacon Neil, all the staff here present, we want to wish all mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, both living and deceased, a happy Mother's Day. A hand to them. We pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Please join us in our closing song, Breathe on Us.